Okay, everybody, I'm back again to discuss some interesting experimentation that I've been doing with canard design. I'm revisiting the canard. My primary thing that I noticed with the old version of the canard that I have uh, was that uh, on launches, it would sometimes just not gain enough airspeed to actually make a successful launch. Uh, and I noticed that with my other airplanes, the primary factor for a successful hand launch was that the lighter the wing loading, the easier it just hand launched. Uh, regardless of of wing configuration and thickness and so on and so forth, I mean, those things all help, but the primary thing, the most important factor, seemed to be the wing loading. So I wanted to get rid of the fuselage here, and I did, and I just have these two booms that have the canard up front. Uh, I had to mount the battery uh, center underneath the, uh, right behind the engine, because if I mounted it four on the canard, it was way too nose heavy. So I had to balance it with some additional nose weight, as you can see up here on the canard. Um, so basically, like I said, all the, uh, I'm going to just flip this over here. All the electronics are, are just hanging out right here on the bottom of the airplane with uh, no fuselage or anything. That saves significant amount of weight. Uh, and even the additional nose weight up front that was taped on, this is all ghetto rigged, of course, because it was all experimentation and changing things a million times until I got it right. Anyway, so even the additional uh, nose weight up front does not come anywhere near the fuselage weight uh, that was there before. I had to use a fairly lightweight battery over here in order to achieve proper CG. <clears throat> if it was too heavy, it was just way too tail heavy. Um, and uh, what I did notice also is that I did try to go a little on the tail heavy side to try to get uh, slightly better uh, high alpha performance. Uh, and uh, I noticed that if you go too much on the tail heavy side, I mean, even just slightly, there seems to be a certain break even point in terms of CG that if you go even a drop behind that point, it gets totally uncontrollable. So you have to stay at that point or forward. The CG calculator gives you a pretty good idea and, and uh, you know, the CG calculator on the internet that a lot of us are familiar with, uh, especially the one that uh, is geared towards canards, it's, it's quite good and uh, it really gives you a good sense. Um, but you know, still I wanted to do the experimentation and the plane becomes almost unflyable when you go back to a certain level, uh, back in, in terms of CG. Um, and uh, I was... Once I got everything dialed in in terms of uh, trim and weight and balance, I was uh, pleasantly surprised at the way the airplane flew. It doesn't have a lot of wing area, and even though it doesn't have a lot of wing area, it, if, uh, it can fly fairly nicely at, uh, you know, when you kill the engine and glide, and glide it in, it still flies fairly nicely. It's, it glides a little fast, not as good as some of the lower wing loading airplanes that I have uh, uh, like this uh, um, huge span, you can't even see it in the camera, huge span um, flying wing, which has you know a, a tremendous amount of wing area. And this huge uh, uh, amount of wing area relative to the weight, the Delta airplane that I did, this plane is actually now the, um, my favorite airplane. Um, oh, by the way, this plane here... Um, I used to have on my old canard, the engine was in the back of the airplane, uh, you know, with a pusher configuration. But I was trying to find a, a situation where I could um, have basically a mid-mount engine. I'm finding that that's very, very advantageous in terms of achieving good CG and, and, and achieving a situation where if the angle of the engine is off a bit, it doesn't usually, I mean, I'm talking about left and right off, it doesn't usually affect the, the tracking of the airplane. Oh, by the way, on this guy, I s angled the nose. I'm going to turn this over again. I angled the nose of the engine bay uh, upward slightly so that I actually get a little help from the thrust of the engine on hand launching, which also made a really nice difference. It really, I mean, the, the old canard, it was a very iffy thing when you were hand launching the airplane. And this one just hand launches absolutely no problem. I didn't even have to toss it. I just let go of the airplane and it just hand, hand launches beautifully. Um, and of course on the old canard I had straight up winglets and on this guy I have 
angled winglets, which um, you know uh, really provide nice roll stability. On the old canard, I did have the drooping leading edge cuffs, and on this one, I decided not to put them on to in order to uh, try to reduce drag as much as possible. And also, once again, I'm I'm really trying to keep the weight down to achieve as low wing loading as possible. Um, again, I'm back to my uh, single servo for running the ailerons and another servo, which, you, which is underneath the canard, for running the canard's elevator. Um, <clears throat> and uh, despite the fact that you have all the electronics hanging out and call, causing all that drag, uh, this airplane does seem to fly much, much better than the old version of the canard that I have. Uh, it just does everything better. It does climbing better. It does uh, rolling better. It does looping better. I mean, it, it just uh, it glides much better, much much better because I guess of the reduced wing loading, um, and uh, you know just there's no fuselage there. I mean, it's it, it, so the the weight is less, and apparently the drag from the electronics hanging out in the middle of the slipstream is no worse apparently than uh, what the fuselage was creating. Um, and I think I covered all the, the interesting points here. The only thing I wanted to tell you is that I tried various configurations, and this seemed to be the most advantageous. I tried the engine up front hanging off the front of the canard here. I uh, tried that, and of course, the reason why I didn't like that at all was because uh, a couple times when I crashed, you know, I was experimenting, doing various different things, changing CG, my engine got trashed. And... I really, I, as the more and more I, I do these uh, RC airplanes, the more I am totally in favor of either a mid-mount or a rear-mount. A rear-mount seems to have difficulty in achieving good CG, although it, uh, you know, provides for easy access and so on and so forth.